Today we are covering fatal shark attacks in 2021. This video is for informational purposes only and is not meant to frighten anyone from using the ocean. Please keep in mind each of these people have families and were loved. Several of the families have GoFundMe pages set up and a link to them along with links to more information can be found in the description. The first fatal shark attack of 2021 occurred in New Zealand. Kayla Marlowe, 19, was swimming with friends in waist deep water off Wahi Beach in the western bay of Pliny, January 7th. Around 5 p.m., a rip current pulled her away from her friends and down past the surf line into deeper water. She was treading water for about 5 to 15 minutes when she began to scream. A suspected white shark had bitten her leg. Lifeguards launched a boat, but the rescue efforts were slowed due to rough water. Marlowe was brought to shore alive, and paramedics began CPR and gave IVs. Unfortunately, she succumbed to the wounds. The biggest contributing factor was most likely how far out she was, along with her possibly frantic, panicked kicking. The last fatal shark attack in New Zealand occurred in 2013. The next fatal incident takes us to New Caledonia. An unidentified yachtsman was moored near May Trey Islet Beach when he went for a swim. Around 11 a.m., he was around 54 yards from the beach and 109 yards from his boat when a 13-foot tiger shark bit his shoulder and almost severed his leg. A jet skier used his ski to frighten off the shark as the heavily bleeding 57-year-old was pulled onto a vessel. The man's femoral artery was severed, and despite being treated by a doctor and two off-duty nurses, he was declared dead. A suspected fatal shark attack occurred in South Africa. Robert Frohenstein, 38, disappeared from Chinsta East Beach in South Africa's East Cape, April 12th. The teeth marks in his body board are confirmed as that of a very large great white shark, a family member wrote on Facebook. A media report will be released shortly from official channels to support this finding. We take comfort in the fact that Robert was doing what he loved and that his ultimate demise would have been as swift, painless, and without a struggle as anyone could hope for. On April 24th, a second person was killed in a shark attack in New Caledonia. Dr. Jean Christoph Biver, 53, was downwinding, which basically involves using a board to surf from point to point. Dr. Biver was found unresponsive floating on his board. He apparently died of a heart attack, possibly due to blood loss after receiving a bite from an estimated 13-foot tiger shark. He was the official vet of the Day Lagoons Aquarium. Passionate always about the water world, he had been practicing in New Caledonia since 1992. He was the official vet of the Lagoons Aquarium for 15 years. In addition to his activities at the clinic, over the past 10 years, he has treated more than 100 turtles in care at the aquarium and contributed to the welfare of thousands of animals. Sincere condolences to the family. The Aquarium de Lagoon said in a statement. The next fatal shark encounter of 2021 occurred in Jamaica. Donovan Haywood, 53, was with a group of 10 spear fishermen in the waters off Little Bay, May 1st. A little after 8 a.m., a large shark grabbed Haywood on his left arm. According to local reports, members of the group fought the shark who was holding the spear fisherman until it pulled away with Haywood's lower arm. He was taken to shore and placed in a truck before being transported to the hospital. Video from the scene showed Haywood had little skin left on his upper arm as his bone was visible and the arm was missing from the elbow down. Spear fishing can attract sharks and as such, this would be considered a provoked incident. Another Spearow was killed off the islands in 2018. The next fatal shark attack takes us to New South Wales. Mark Singuinetti was surfing with three friends off Turncurry Beach May 18th. Singuinetti was surfing near a break wall around 11 a.m. when he saw an estimated 15-foot, 4.5-meter white shark. He yelled warnings to his friends and other surfers. A witness reported seeing the shark bite Singuinetti's right thigh and then biting him again about five seconds later. His friends and other surfers came to his aid and pulled him out of the water. CPR was performed, but the father of two was declared dead at the beach. We all knew him as a legend with a heart as deep as the ocean, which was the first of many loves, his daughters Bella and Gemma said in a statement. Dad was a truly special soul, a kind, generous, thoughtful man, friend, and father. He saw the light within everyone in every situation. He's home now in the ocean and in our hearts, and he'll be riding the waves of life with us forever. Marcelo Rocha Santos 
was hanging out with friends in an area called Little Church. Just before 2 p.m., Santos waded into the water to cool off and use the restroom when he was mauled by a shark. Video of the aftermath showed tremendous injuries, and Santos died en route to the hospital. Another swimmer died in the same area in 2018. Timothy Obi went missing while diving off the coast of Jacksonville, Florida, July 10th. His recovered wetsuit showed signs of a shark, but it is unknown if he was attacked or died of other causes. We would like to thank the crews from the USCG, JSO, JFRD, FWC, and all the volunteers for their compassion, their professionalism, and their steadfast dedication to finding Timmy, Tim's brother Ryan said. The U.S. Coast Guard in particular have been absolutely amazing, providing detailed daily updates, being available and responsive literally all hours of the day, and bringing real humanity in an inhuman ordeal. We are eternally grateful to all of them. In Australia, Tim Thompson, 31, was surfing at Shelley Beach September 5th when a suspected white shark severed his arm and injured his back. He was assisted to shore where Good Samaritans applied a tourniquet and administered first aid. Despite four ambulances and the helicopter being dispatched, Mr. Thompson passed away. To the crew of the surfers down at the beach, thank you for being brave, getting him to shore, and for doing whatever you could to try and save him, Tim's pregnant wife Katie posted. Thank you to the first responders, paramedics, and lastly, the West Pack Rescue Helicopter. Thank you. You were Tim's favorite charity. He would always donate whatever cash we had and say, I hope I never need you. Well, it turns out he did need you, and you were there. I don't think I'll ever be able to express how grateful I am and that you all tried your best for him. I hope Timmy is up there doing what he loves, surfing the best barrels and watching over us. May he rest in peace. Cut all your loved ones that little bit tighter and tell them that you love them. It's what Timmy would tell us to do in times like these, she said. In Carnes, Australia, a spear fisherman went missing on October 16th. Torrent Sambo, 26, was solo fishing off Sudbury Reef when he disappeared. His dive gear was found underwater near his boat, but no body recovered. In Western Australia, Paul Millichip, 57, was out for a swim on November 6 when he was attacked by a large shark. A group of several teenagers were in a small dinghy when they saw Millichip being attacked. They boated to him as they began yelling warnings to other ocean users and contacted authorities. A separate witness said he saw Mr. Millichip being separated by the shark and the shark consuming one half of the body as the dinghy approached. Authorities were only able to locate Millichip's swim goggles. Unfortunately, his wife and children were at the beach. It must have been an absolutely terrifying experience for them, so my heart goes out to them, Millichip's wife said of the teens. She declined to be identified by her name and recognized the teens. I thank them for what they did. Amazing. They could potentially have saved other lives, she said. Mrs. Millichip also thanked friends for their support since her and her husband's families are in the United Kingdom and may not be able to travel to Australia. And finally, rest in peace, Paul, she said. He died doing what he enjoyed doing the most, which was exercising. The final publicly listed fatal shark attack of 2021 occurred in California. Thomas Butterfield was boogie boarding when he was attacked by a suspected great white shark. A surfer saw his lone boogie board floating in the water and thought he might be drowning. She paddled to the board and pulled on the leash until she pulled Butterfield up. Once she saw him, she realized he had passed away and took his body into shore. The majority of fatal shark attacks for the year involved large white sharks. As mentioned earlier, this video is for informational purposes only. While fatal shark attacks do occur, they are rare compared to the amount of people in the water on a daily basis. For more information on what you can do to prevent a negative shark encounter, visit trackingsharks.com slash shark attack prevention. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up, and if you have suggestions for other videos, leave us a note in the comments. You can join the discussion online at facebook.com slash tracking sharks, and also find a link to our Facebook group there. Please don't let this video keep you from the water. The ocean is big and beautiful, and there's plenty of room for us and the sharks. Again, there are GoFundMe pages that some of these families have set up. You can find those in the, in the description box below. Thank you for watching.